Hi, welcome to Perhol Interviews. My name is Julia Toma. I am a professional pianist and a rehab doctor. In this interview, I will talk with Matt McCrary about the research done in musicians. Matt McCrary has a Bachelor of Science, Movement Science, a Bachelor of Fine Arts, Jazz, Jazz Studies from the University of Michigan, and also a PhD in Biomechanical Sciences from the University of Sydney. The title of the thesis is Effects of Muscle Fatigue, Pain and Warm-Up on Elite Performance. Matt previously worked as a clinical researcher officer and is presently an adjunct lecturer at the University of New South Wales. He was a humble postdoctoral fellow at the Hanover University of Music, Drama and Media, and at the moment he's a postdoctoral researcher at Hanover Medical School and member of board of directors and the director of Young Professionals Committee of the Performing Arts Medicine Association, PAMA. Taking into consideration that I am also a volunteer at PAMA, I can say that Matt is somehow kind of my boss. So I'm very honored, Matt, that you're here today, and thank you. Thank yeah, you. No, thanks for having me. Yeah, a volunteer boss, but yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean for you, Matt, to be a research in a transdisciplinary field, music medicine? How it is? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's both, it's simultaneously really exciting and really challenging. Uh, I mean, exciting because there's, um, yeah, basically there's so many unanswered questions that you can go in a variety of different research directions and really everything's pretty wide open. Like it's not very, uh, the path is not narrow and well-defined. Yeah, uh, exactly. That also presents some challenges, of course, uh, because it's this new field. Um, so getting buy-in from other scientists, also from artists as well, uh, in terms of, you know, that we're trying to help improve their health, not uh, have negative impacts on their playing. Um, and then also just for research, pure, purely practical considerations, getting funding for research uh, because everything's so wide open and not defined can be a challenge as well. Yes, somehow people can say that it's a bit chaotic to do research in this field because it's not standardized yet. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But I mean, I think it's uh, it's like any young field. I think we'll we'll get there in the end. But, uh, it's a but process. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. It's chaotic, but it's uh, also exciting at the same time. Yes, but until now, um, what do you think are the most common pathologies and symptoms that you have observed in musicians? Uh, yeah, so my research specifically is focused a lot on pain syndromes, uh, which have also, uh, there have been a few studies that have noted that pain is the most common complaint in, uh, in musicians more broadly. Um, so yeah, so probably pain syndromes, uh, largely in the playing limb, if we're talking about uh, violinists or pianists or percussionists, uh, and then pain around the, the embouchure in, um, in wind players as well. So do you think it's more physical related symptoms? Yeah, well, that's, that's actually a good point. Uh, so I think that in terms of the reporting, I think that uh, what we've seen from the research, which has been generally physically focused, focused on physical symptoms, uh, has been pain. I think that there is also a large mental health component that is starting to get some attention in the research, but to this mm -hmm. point, uh, it's difficult to compare and contrast how, uh, you know, how many people have pain versus how many people have mental health challenges that are, uh, that are high level musicians, because it's, uh, we know we have quite a lot of data about pain uh, and not so much data about the frequency of mental health uh, challenges. Okay, and regarding pain, do you think it's more musculoskeletal because of overexertion, or what do you think? Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's a really interesting question. Uh, so one of my uh, postdoctoral projects was looking at this specifically, um, looking at overuse syndrome in musicians and trying to figure out the exact mechanisms of action. So if it was, if it's a similar mechanism as we see in athletes where essentially they fatigue, and then from that fatigue, then you get uh, chronic pain out of fatigue. Um, and, it, and it's mostly happening at the site of the muscle. So it's not happening in the, in the brain, in the central nervous system. It's happening at the site of the muscle. Uh, we ran a similar experiment in musicians. We saw very little fatigue happening at the site of the muscle, uh, which then, okay. you know, if you, if you extrapolate that out, if we're talking about pain, the way that pain comes about there appears to be a greater involvement of cognitive processes and the central nervous system than just pain happening at, you know, if you have forearm pain, that doesn't mean that your 
or our muscles are necessarily over fatigued but mm -hmm. that might be that's the site of uh where the pain is presented um, or like the top of the iceberg it's more complex yes. that we can yes. imagine yeah, yeah, yeah. or that yeah, a musician exactly. might think about this. right yeah right exactly yeah so the problems are manifesting physically but that may not be uh where they start Okay, you also mentioned like uh, where it's located, where's the um, localization, depending of the instrument practiced. And um, but can you say or have you noticed any differentiation by age? Uh, yeah, so that's a that's a really interesting question, actually, uh, it, because we definitely see more younger musicians, uh, so university age musicians and early career musicians. Uh, with a greater degree of conditions and pain syndromes and uh, and, and other uh, performance related conditions, uh, and, and we've seen less in the older cohorts, so professional 50, 60 year old professionals, uh, fewer complaints. Uh, however, there's uh, there's likely a survivor effect at play uh, because these uh, these effects haven't really been. Uh, well discussed in the musical community and there's not really that many great treatment options for this okay so you mentioned that you're not so many treatment options at the moment for the musicians uh yeah so i mean in terms of uh yeah at, in terms of validated treatment options like you would see for uh for other conditions particularly uh, i mean sports is the is the clearest analogy a lot of times when we're talking about uh, performing artists and their syndromes. Uh, there's a lot more investment. There's a lot more treatment options. There's a lot more available professionals to help uh, in okay. sport as compared to uh, as compared to in music. Uh, it's pretty standard even at a high school level to have a health professional on staff for yeah. uh, athletes, and that the the uh, the same is certainly not the case for musicians. We're seeing an increase, uh, particularly in universities of uh, you know, having trained health professionals on staff and having trained um, support available uh, beyond universities in the professional setting, it very much varies from organization to organization and as well as country to country. Mm -hmm. So it depends. And also do you think like um, this can be not only a solution for treatment, but also for prevention? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, just having a, um, yeah, having, a health um a health focus in and amongst you have all of these artistic goals and having uh, a health related goal that we're going to achieve all of these health related goals i uh, sorry to achieve all of these artistic goals mm -hmm. while also staying healthy uh it, it's uh, is is a great benefit to to most musical organizations yeah yeah exactly uh, you mentioned that you were researching more the pain topic but um regarding all the research was done until now on musician health what was the most research topic and the least research topic it the most research was also pain or it was something different yeah so i mean i think um yeah i'd say that the most research topics are simply chronicling the problems of performing artists is chronicling the medical conditions of performing artists like there's a lot of research uh, epidemiologic research chronicling these are the conditions that musicians suffer from a lot of times it is pain is um, amongst one of those but there's you know pain amongst a, a suite of other of other conditions uh there's you know, studies from most uh from most countries around the world uh, that are active in performing arts medicine research uh, that are epidemiological studies. So there's a lot uh, describing the problem. I would say okay. there's not so much research, and there are good reasons for this, uh, not so much research uh, presenting solutions or investigating solutions to the problem. So treatment approaches and uh, you know preventative activities. And I mean, I think that, uh, yeah, the, the good reasons for this are that that research is uh, more challenging and also more expensive to conduct. Uh, you can do epidemiologic studies through a simple survey, setting up a study to look at preventative strategies and treatment strategies and how they work and whether the how effective they are uh, is, is a bit more of a complex undertaking. Yeah, while you were talking, I was thinking, I don't know. How is the involvement and the interest of musicians in this research? Maybe this is also a reason 
why we don't have so many research studies at the moment on solutions. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, I think that uh, there's another, uh, yeah, another anecdote from a study that I did for my my recent postdoc, which is uh, so we had we took a uh, we're looking at uh, preventative uh, strategies, and one of them to prevent fatigue that is very very common in sports is you take a picture of the uh, of like, some key indicators of physical and psychological stress, and you track these over time. And so if you see the idea is if you see a spike in physical or psychological stress, then that's when uh, athletes are more likely to get injured. And we thought potentially the same would apply for musicians. Uh, the difference, though, being that, again, you have this issue of, uh, of resources in sport versus music. So in sport, they have trainers that are collecting these data every single day. And yeah. we thought, OK, well, we can just make an app and musicians will fill out the app. And uh, that'll be great. Um, and was it working with that? <laughs> so we, we had a lot of people who uh, who filled it out once and then didn't really uh, come back after that. So I think that, I mean, just, there's so many competing priorities. Um, that, yeah, I mean, I went to music school as well. I remember that even though, even as very, very health focused person uh, at the time and then increasingly so later, I, I it's still my number one focus was can this make me play better and i think that the difficulty with research is it's unclear like we're we're asking the question so we're trying to find out yeah. if these things can make musicians play better um but uh because we're asking the question it's not as strong as believe you know exercises that their teacher has proposed or going to see another concert and things that are more clearly yes, associated focused with, with performance and practice and yeah, success exactly. to stay like this. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Okay, and regarding musicians, what do you think is the most research group at the moment? Regarding uh, so musicians' most, health. Yeah, uh, university musicians, like hands down. And again, I mean, again, that's uh, like mm -hmm. that's because they're uh, it's easy to research university musicians because most of the uh, researchers are at universities university, as well. Yes. Yeah. So and regarding the instrument play, do you think it were the more the pianist, the violinist, or I don't know? Yeah. So I mean, I think it's also uh, so. There's quite a lot of data on violinists. I think that's mm -hmm. because there are more of them, so it's easy to get a lot of numbers. Yeah, it's also <laughs> it's quite in terms of like setting up research projects. Um, it's a bit more difficult and more complex uh, to investigate wind instruments as compared to um, string instruments and percussion instruments. Just um, you have more systems involved uh, or, or more systems that are critical to sound production, I guess. Than yeah, in... these variables, I think it's very hard to <laughs> manage it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, you talked what was done until now. From now on, what do you think, um, what is the trend for the research in the musician's health field? Toward which direction, toward which team? Yeah, so I think, um, and I'm quite happy to see this, uh, the, the theme is towards more research into treatment and prevention strategies, uh, because we're becoming a slightly bigger field, and so we're having uh, there's more attention, and with more attention comes a bit more, uh, a bit more resources. Um, and I think the focus is, um, and, and I think that it's a, it's an interesting relationship. It's not quite as direct as I think we previously thought it was, we're finding out, but it's taking strategies from sports medicine and sports science and seeing here. how they work <laughs> in musicians. And I think, yeah, sometimes it works great. Uh, but yeah, but like our fatigue study, we were expecting to see the exact same results and we looked at pianists uh, as, you know, in terms of how muscles and how fatigue works in pianists as compared to athletes. And we saw something completely different. So there's a lot of parallels in terms of where it's a, it's a you know, it's a performance related activity. And uh, the goal is to maximize performance while staying healthy. Uh, but but also in differences. Terms of, yeah, in terms of how you get there, it's, uh, yeah, it physically and physiologically seems to be quite a bit different and even more so I think we're figuring out than we initially realized but yeah but I think that that's but why why trend. do you think it's like this why it's music more complex or 
Well, yeah. So, I mean, it's uh, so some studies from uh, so yeah, I uh, worked under Eckhart Alton Mueller, who's a German neurologist who's been uh, working in this field for 30 years. And a lot of his studies have shown uh, he's uh, more focused on a neurologist, obviously, but focused on the brain specifically. Yeah, focal distance, and... I remember well. Yes, yeah, yeah, the, the brain, and then when the brain goes wrong, and the uh, focal dystonia and similar conditions. Um, and uh, so, yeah, in terms of brain activation, music is one of the, playing a musical instrument is one of the things that lights up the brain more than any other activity, and particularly compared to sports. So in terms of, like, because if you think about it as a violinist or as a pianist or as a drummer, you're performing, you know, hundreds to thousands of micro movements every minute that need to be precisely coordinated for you to achieve the musical outcome that you're looking for. And uh, in sport, it's a lot more strength and power focus, but the, 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 the burden of coordination is not quite as high. So you have like, there's a higher burden on like the muscles specifically, but less burden on the cognitive system. And so I think that that's, that's the hypothesis that I'm working with at the moment is that the burden is more central and more cognitive in musicians as compared to athletes where it's more musculoskeletal. So musicians should, should feel like more smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like well, there's a lot of, there's, there's some data that suggests that uh, musicians are, uh, yeah, in terms of how their brain functions. But I'm like, joking. Like, yeah, I'm, better. Better. No, 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 yeah, I'm saying, yeah, if, to your joke, there is also some data that shows okay. that. Are, yeah. <laughs> okay, at the end of our interview, Matt, if you could pass a thought, a message to musicians in 2023, what would it be? Ah, From your, cool. your perspective as a researcher, what you should tell for us, for musicians? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, oh, that's a good question. One thought. Um, yeah, I guess it would be that, um, yeah, it, when you're looking to perform better and when you're looking to maximize your performance, um, actually your main limiting factor is your own health. So um, if you can, you, know, you need to maximize your own health in order to maximize your performance, uh, they're not, uh, they're codependent rather than mutually exclusive, which I think there's a lot of uh, the prevailing wisdom is that, you know, you play through the pain and you, uh, and, and, and you know, and that's normal. And that's, uh, you know, I famous musicians who have had physical problems have been successful musicians in spite of their physical problems. And, and and mental health challenges, not because of those uh, mental health challenges. So, uh, so yeah. So I guess if I could say one thing, it would be, um, yeah, your 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 health and uh, your good health is the vehicle uh, that's going to take you to even greater heights as a as a performer and as a musician. And if you allow me to rephrase it, maybe to see performance like in a holistic way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah be... Exactly good for yeah. the musicians okay thank you very much for the interview i am very grateful for your time today yeah no thanks so much for having me